You're listening to the Rod Langway Fan Club. Good evening, everybody. Your host, Jeff Romans, the Rod Langway Fan Club podcast summer recap. I'm out here doing some barbecuing. It's mid-autumn festival here in Taiwan. Barbecuing has become a bit of a tradition here. Guys are getting ready here. I think we're almost ready to go after I get these on the grill here. You got to get in here, bud. We're ready to start. All right, let's do it, boys. Hey, guys. Nice Hello. to see you guys again. Yeah, long time no see. We're all wow. back from Canada. You guys are looking ridiculous. What are you guys wearing on your heads? I wish the people at home could see this right now. They're pomelo caps. This is a tradition. You know, you, for those of you that don't know, a pomelo is basically the Asian version of the grapefruit, and they are traditional fruit enjoyed during this time of the year. Yeah, we put the peels on our heads. Oh, you guys look great. Yeah. And it looks like you guys have been partying tonight like the Colorado Avalanche. Yeah, wow. What a season. It has been a while since our last show. Apologies. Uh, We did not do that promised show that we would do, Uh, but we're going to make up for lost time here doing a little recap. We got to start with the Avs. What a run. What a Stanley Cup final, guys. Yeah, I mean, the heavyweights were fighting it out and uh, Colorado came out on top. They were amazing. What a great roster they had. Yeah, this is the final that I think a lot of hockey fans wanted. We were treated to some excellent games and in the end, the Avs came through. It's hard to believe that this team, I mean, what, four or five years ago, they were last place in the NHL. Nathan McKinnon comes through and all those guys, and they get the cup. Amazing run. Amazing. Yeah. And kudos to Joe Sackick. What a great job building that championship roster. Tampa Bay, also kudos to them. Almost got the three-peat, put up a big fight. Shame they didn't have Braden Point, right? Yes, but how about this offseason? I mean, let's get to it. What happened? Well, John, a couple of your namesakes were the biggest deals of the offseason. Yeah, a couple Johns. A couple Gian- Johns, yeah. I mean, we had Gianni Hockey, Johnny Goudreau, and uh, Jonathan Huberto. Some big names moving. I mean, what do we think about this here? Well, it's funny because those two things are kind of related to each other, right? So the first big free agent signing was Johnny Goudreau shocking the hockey world Going to the Columbus Blue Jackets. They weren't wow. even on anyone's radar, were they? No, no. I don't so, think anybody saw that coming. A shock to the Flames. And I think the Devils and the Flyers and a few other teams also were pretty surprised he went that way. But uh, good for Columbus to attract a star player. And then because of that, it led to a series of events. Yeah, that's right. I mean, Calgary really had a big hole in their roster. So they go out and they pick up Jonathan Huberdeau from the Florida Panthers. The, the Panthers all-time leading scorer. For Well, Matthew Kachuk, who had told the Flames he would not be resigning with them and would be testing the free agency waters. Florida also had Mackenzie Weger and Jonathan Huberdeau, who were about to come up for new contracts in a year from now. So both teams kind of moving out players that didn't look like they were long-term options in a blockbuster. Yeah, true blockbuster. Not something we see in hockey all that often, is it? I cannot wait to see what Chuck will do. But how about Calgary? I mean, they actually made out pretty well. For a while there, their fan base was completely dejected. Yeah, props to Brad Tree Living, who was in a really, really difficult position. And not only that, he goes out and he signs Nazem Kadri, arguably, you know, the second or third best forward available on the free agent market. And all of a sudden, the Calgary Flames might actually be a better team this year than they were last year. Although that's something we can debate in the next show. Yeah, it's a very interesting question. Well, you guys know that I love the goaltenders and this offseason was a goaltending carousel. I don't want to get into too much of our favorite teams because we're going to cover that later. But I want to ask you guys, which do you think were the biggest pickups uh, for in the goaltending market? Well, I think we have to start with the Edmonton Oilers. I mean, yeah, last season they made it to the Western Conference Final. And Mike Smith, you know, he had some nice moments, but he also had some pretty big bloopers, I, I think it's safe to say. And uh, they go out and they get Jack Campbell. And this could be the piece they're looking for to really solidify that goaltending position, push them up to that next level. Is it, though? Is mm-hmm. it, though? I wonder. Probably what? the best available goalie in the offseason, but uh, it was a bit of an underwhelming class. We'll see how it goes for the Oilers. What do you think, Jeff? Who, who's your guy? You're the big goalie guy? Well, hey, I mean, Stanley Cup champion, Darcy Camper. Uh, remember, he was only on a one-year deal last year. He comes in. He wins the Cup. He was okay. He didn't really have to be, though, right? Yeah, he and he did have that eye injury that he had to battle through in the playoffs. Uh, you know, he made enough saves to get the Stanley Cup victory, so credit to Darcy Kemper. Absolutely. It pays off for Colorado. Anyways, in the offseason, he's now moved to the Washington Capitals. 
And of course, that domino falls. Colorado now has a void, and they go and they get Alexander Georgiev. Yeah, and he's shown some flashes of being a pretty decent backup with the New York Rangers. So we'll see what he has. Uh, He's going to be playing behind a very, very good team. And another major storyline that we saw this summer was a lot of cap compliance moves. Good players on the move for nothing. And of course, because of COVID, the salary cap has been flat for quite a while and looks like it's going to remain to be so. Of course, the Minnesota Wild had to part ways with Kevin Fiala. Yeah, that was a really big casualty, partly due to the buyouts of uh, Parise and Suter. Yeah. But that was LA's gain, right? Yeah, I mean, that's still hurting Minnesota. And yeah, I mean, LA gets Fiala. That's a huge move. I mean, he was probably their second best player, certainly their second best forward. Uh, they're going to miss him a lot. And look at the Tampa Bay Lightning. They lost two major pieces from their last three runs to the Stanley Cup Finals. First, they have to send Ryan McDonough to the Nashville Predators for pretty much nothing for, you know, a a low tier prospect. And then they got to let Andre Palat walk in free agency as he signs with the New Jersey Devils. So again, these great teams, it's really hard to keep them together in this cap era. It's true, right? I look at the the Columbus Blue Jackets. Yes, they brought in Johnny Goudreau. That's a lot of money though, right? Mm. And uh, they re-signed Patrick Laine. They gave him a bunch of money, and probably one of the oddest deals was Eric Gabranson. They gave him four years. Real head scratcher. Uh, yeah. Strange one, right? Yeah. So it. one of the casualties of this was um, Bjorkstrand, right? So Bjorkstrand ends up leaving and going to Seattle, which I thought was a bit of a strange move, but good for Seattle, right? Um, their Columbus's loss is uh, Seattle's gain. Yeah, showing once again the cap space is really an asset in today's NHL. And also for uh, Seattle to get uh, Barakovsky as well. So they, they did pretty well. Yeah, yeah, cleaning up. So, I mean, another thing we've seen is uh, teams foregoing the bridge deal, which is something I like. I like the bridge deal. I think it's a good way to figure out what kind of player you're dealing with. But uh, teams are choosing to ignore that and signing some young guys to some big time deals. Yeah, I think there's an interesting way to look at this and the cap won't stay flat forever. It should be going up pretty soon. So some of these deals might look really good in three or four years from now if the cap goes up a lot. You know, an $8 million, $7 million a year deal might look really good. So which of these deals in the off season for these young players really stood out to you guys? Uh, There were some big ones. I think uh, one that was shocking to a lot of people was Tage Thompson getting over $7 million a season for seven years from the Buffalo Sabres after one good year. He did put up 38 goals last year, but that was really his first good year. He's a big dude too. He's a big body. Six foot seven. What a monster. Yeah. Monster deal too. John, how about you? Well, it popped out at me that the St. Louis Blues decided to sign Robert Thomas eight times eight. Uh, I mean, that's a pretty big deal. He had a great season, but again, I mean, foregoing the bridge deal and just going all in on this guy. What do we think of that? Well, I, they seem as a first line centerman. Uh, we've seen similar deals uh, not so long ago for Nick Suzuki and for Josh Norris, who are also considered first line centermen for their team. So it's oh, maybe not that crazy. I was looking at the Tampa Bay Lightning. We talked about some of their losses in the offseason, but they re-signed Sergachev to an eight-year deal worth $8.5 million. That's a lot of money for a young player. That seems a little rich, especially considering the guys that they had to give up on. Uh, He is only 24 years old, though. It seems like he's been in the league forever. Um, I guess they really think he's going to become, you know, their, their solid number two behind Victor Hedman. So why not? Okay, I mean, another big name, and this is a player I really like, and I think what Ottawa is doing is excellent, but they signed Tim Stutzla, eight years, 8.35 million bones. I mean, that's pretty rich. He's still a young kid. He's shown a lot of promise, but I don't really think we know what we're getting from him just yet, do we? Yeah, more bones than a paleontologist. (laughs) Yeah, that's right. Now, listen, guys, we should talk a little bit about our favorite teams and how they did in the offseason. Mark, let's start with you. The Montreal Canadiens, they had a really big summer. Yeah, it was an exciting summer. You know, I was back home. I watched the draft at home with my dad for the first time in many, many years. They had the first pick overall. You know, surprised a lot of people going with Yuri Slipkovsky. Yes, did they ever. They shocked the hockey world with that one. Yeah, we'll see how that pans out. It's always hard to say. We'll have to see a couple years down the road. Uh, Also, they made two trades on the draft floor, which was really exciting. The draft was in Montreal. And when the dust settled, they had picked up Kirby Doc, who is only 21 years old, former third overall pick. So that could end up being a steal as well if it pans out. I mean, another move that Montreal made that I kind of liked was, uh, you know, they they took on Sean Monaghan's contract. He's been underperforming for a few years now, and uh, they got a first rounder in return. Nothing wrong with that. 
No, and he's coming back from hip surgery. If he plays well, maybe they can flip him at the deadline, get another asset. So nothing really to dislike about that move. Mark, I wanted to ask you, they they lose uh, Weber, who probably wasn't going to play anyways, but and uh, Romanov. Were you surprised by these deals? Well, Weber was never going to play again. He's on LTIR Island. Uh, they did get Evgeny Dodonov uh, from the Vegas Knights, though, for taking on that contract. So another player who's going to be a UFA at the end of the year, maybe they flip him for an asset as well. So really good asset management by Kent Hughes. Uh, But the pipeline for left D is pretty full in Montreal. So Alexander Romanov was a guy who was sent away in the first trade that eventually got them Kirby Dock. So, you know, you can't keep everyone when you got a bunch of prospects. So physical defenseman, good player, but maybe doesn't have the upside of some of their other prospects. Do you think that Carey Price will play again? I think, sadly, that this is the end of the line for Carey Price. He was just put on LTIR. Um, and it looks like unless there's another surgery in his future, this could be the end of the road for one of the best goalies of his generation. John, were you surprised that Montreal didn't select Shane Wright? I was very surprised. In fact, I was super surprised he dropped all the way to fourth. Um, and I think Seattle was quite fortunate to get him there. I was also surprised that this was the first time we ever had a Slovak go first overall. Not only did he go first overall, number one and two. Both players from Slovakia, so great draft for uh, Slovakian hockey. And John, your Winnipeg Jets, they had kind of a quiet offseason. What do you think? Yeah, to say the least. I mean, they did almost nothing. Uh, We did re-sign Pierre-Luc Dubois. Um, We got rid of Eric Comrie. We brought in big save Dave Riddick. And uh, And Gagne. And Gagne, yeah. Yikes. Yeah, and that is about it. I think it's kind of a wait-and-see season. We have a new coach and Rick Bonus. Um, there's some questions around our core, especially Blake Wheeler and Mark Shifley. So I think people sort of want to wait and assess how this roster pans out and then, uh, see how to act accordingly. John, I can't let this go. Uh, I mentioned, you mentioned Pierre-Luc Dubois. I heard that he, uh, he doesn't want to be in Winnipeg and, uh, he actually has been talking about maybe he wanted to be a Montreal Canadian one day. What are your thoughts on that? Oh, well, I mean, I wouldn't mind being a Montreal Canadian either. Yeah, I don't know, John. I think it's kind of a slow off season for the Winnipeg Jets. Ah, oh, funny you should say that, Mr. Jeff Rollman, because I've been dying to ask you all off season, which of these amazing acquisitions will put your team over the top this year? Will it be Pierre Engvall? Will it be Cali Yarncroak? Maybe Jordy Ben or Victor Mete? Perhaps the great Dennis Mulgan or the amazing Adam Gaudet? Or maybe that dude from Colorado who dropped and dented the cup? Which of these <laughs> great stars is going to bring the cup back to Toronto? <laughs> okay. Uh, it's kind of been a little bit of an uneventful um, summer for Toronto. But guys, come on. The big uh, moves that were made were getting Murray in net from Ottawa and Sam Sonoff from Washington. You guys tell me, is this a goaltending tandem that's better than last year? Uh, I don't really like it that much, to be honest. Uh, two guys who have talented potential, but I don't know. What do you think, John? To be honest, I thought Jack Campbell was pretty good. I mean, you gave him one shot. He played pretty well, and then uh, he's gone. And I got to say, I mean, Matt Murray has been awful for the past few years, and Sam Sonoff never panned out to the player we thought he should be. I just think the Leafs were better off last season. Yeah, I think when you look at Campbell and Morazic, that combo, and then you look at Murray and Sam Sonoff, I think it's a wash. We'll see, though. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot we'll see, um, but I think we're about down here, aren't we? Oh, well, John, hey, I dropped a pretty penny on these Rod Langway-themed mooncakes. Oh. Look at these. It's a silhouette of Rod Langway. Oh, there's the Whoa, man himself. Oh, that's pretty neat. I don't know. That, <laughs> yeah. I love this. Rod looks great. Do you guys like mooncakes? No, the moon is cool. I like cake, but mooncakes are gross. I don't mind them. Yeah, it's a big tradition here in Taiwan. You've got to eat your mooncakes. They've got the egg yolks. I mean, some of them, they're good. Sometimes not, right? Nasty business. I'm sorry. Can't get on board. But they do look great with Rod on them. So are we just going to eat these or what are we doing? No, 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 no. So the idea is that these are going to be handed out to teams that have had the best off season. So we've got three mooncakes here. So oh, okay. who's getting your mooncake, John? Well, I mean, that's a tough call. Some big moves, some, uh, you know, some teams really moving and shaking. But uh, I really liked what the Ottawa Senators did. I mean, it was kind of unbelievable. It was. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they get Alex Dubrinkit, 40 goal score. Um, Cam Talbot, solidify the goaltending. Uh, Claude Giroux. Yes. Hometown boy. Yeah. And uh, Matthew Joseph. I mean, a nice young player. So I I think that this team is actually poised to take a big step forward next year. Finally. They could contend for a playoff spot. They're still in a tough division, but this team is definitely on the rise. Worth a mooncake. Mm-hmm. 
How about your moon cake there, Marky? Who would you like to give that to? Ooh, you know, a lot of good candidates out there, but I really like what the Carolina Hurricanes did. Uh, they found a lot of value out there. So the Sharks were looking to cut salary, give up Brent Burns. I think he's still got some really good hockey in him. I think he'll look good on that PP1 unit in Carolina. They also picked up Max Pacioretty for basically nothing from the Knights. This is a guy with 30, 40 goal potential. He will start the year on long-term injured reserve, but hey, he'll be back in time for the playoffs and what a great late season addition he's going to be. Um, They also uh, picked up stalwart Paul Stastny. Um, former Winnipeg Jet and, uh, you know, a bit of a Swiss Army Knife kind of player. You nice never move. have enough center depth, right? No, exactly. And they they, you know, they lost Tony D'Angelo, which was slightly surprising. Move yeah, to Philadelphia. That they was let him odd. walk. Talented but, guy. Yeah, but they did get Andre Kasha as well. Yeah. Yeah, you know, a bargain contract. He's still relatively young. If he can stay healthy, he has shown flashes of being a 20, 30 goal man in the NHL. Yeah, I think he has a little bit more to prove. He does. He does. Before I give out my mooncake, guys, I got to give some honorable mention to the Detroit Red Wings. Stevie Eisen was pretty busy this past offseason. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, they did bring in some quality hockey players. To me, it feels like it's a little bit early for them to be making these kinds of moves. But uh, I don't know. I guess maybe some veterans to support some of the young guys they have coming up. I mean, David Perron, he's an excellent player. He's been playing his, the best hockey of his career recently. Um, can't go wrong there. And Andrew Kopp. I know you're going to miss him in Winnipeg. Yes, absolutely. They also got Kubalik from Chicago. They gave yeah. up on him. You know, he scored 30 goals not that long ago last year. Really rough one in Chicago, but he's still young. And I think this could be a nice uh, value addition. Although I was a little surprised that Detroit signed uh, Sherratt for four years. Yeah, Ben Sherratt, uh, I think he's a good bottom pairing defender at this stage of his career. But I think more so just for leadership. He is a good guy in the room. And they got a lot of young defensemen on that team. So he could be good in that sense. And John, Detroit also got a new goaltender. Yeah, they picked up Vili Husso from the St. Louis Blues, who for a long time was sort of supposed to be the anointed number one there. So this might be a sneaky move from Stevie Y. And remember, this is a year after they picked up Alex Nedeljkovic from Carolina. So now they've got two relatively young, promising goaltenders who will be a nice 1A, 1B kind of, you know, being competitive with each other. I think this is a nice uh, combo for the net in Detroit for the next little while here. Another honorable mention, I just got to mention really quickly, the Anaheim uh, Ducks, they get Klingberg from Dallas, right? Who's the best defenseman who was available in this offseason, yeah? Yeah, it looks like nobody was able to give him the term he wanted, so he just went for big dollars. I think from Anaheim's perspective, he can work with some of their young demon, and at the end of the year, if he has a good season, flip him for some prospects and picks. So, interesting move by Anaheim. Very. Rangers were quiet, weren't they? They only yeah. got uh, Trochik in the offseason. Well, this is the position they wanted to solidify, though. Second line centermen. They feel like they're not that far away from competing for a cup. So uh, I like the move in the short term. Might have gone a little long on the term, though. So, guys, my mooncake has to go to the Calgary Flames. Of course. Uh, yeah. We've already talked about what they've done this offseason, and fantastic. There's a lot of excitement in Calgary. They totally turned it around. Yeah, just based on degree of difficulty alone, to have looked like they might have the worst offseason in hockey, and then to turn it around so quickly. Again, like I said before, props to Brad Tree Living. Yeah, I mean, I can't wait to see if they're better or worse than... Whoa, what's wrong with the cat? He looks like he's yeah. freaking out. Yeah, he is kind of freaking out. I don't know. He's what weird. What is up with your... Know. He's weird. But yeah, I mean, it was a crazy off season. Lots of stuff going on. Lots to talk about. But I can't oh. wait for our preseason show. I can't like, wait that's gonna for... Be... Is that the fire alarm? Uh-oh. Oh, the barbecue! Oh, Joe! Oh, Joe! Oh, you idiot! Oh, my God. There are going to be hockey pucks okay, on the okay. grill. All right. Sorry. Uh, listen, oh, my God. Thank okay. you, everybody, for tuning in. Always something. Happy Ruins the festival. festival. Yeah. We name, will see man? you Where's soon for our season preview. Talk soon. Hope you had yourselves a time. Well, I, I, I hope you had yourselves a time. Hope you had yourselves a time. Hope, hope you had time. Time, time. Hope, hope, hope you had Hope, hope you had yourselves a time. Hope you had, hope, hope, hope you had, hope you had, hope you had.